guessed it, is love. Isn't that nice? Well, I had a lovely holiday. Uh, thank you so much for being so welcoming to MC, who was with you last Sunday. He said he had a fantastic time with all of you and received a very warm welcome. So thank you all so much. And I'm sure you learned quite a lot from him uh, last Sunday. I want to let you know about a couple of things that are going on, uh, particularly with Musselboro Churches together. Uh, we have a Songs of Praise service that we are doing in celebration of Pentecost, and that will be on the 19th of May at 7 p.m. at the Congregationalist Church. Um, so mark that in your calendars, the 19th of May at 7 p.m., a Songs of Praise service. Different members from different congregations that are a part of Musselboro Churches together are putting in a song uh, and talking a little bit about what it means to them. So it'll be a really lovely service, so please do join us for that. Uh, the next thing is to remind you about our drive to collect items for women's aid. You've already been very generous, so much so that I've had to shift stuff from the box to my office. So thank you so much, and please keep bringing in items for that as well. Uh, and finally, just to let you know that every week we continue to collect for our local food bank, so feel free to grab an extra tin or some shelf-stable items while you're doing your shopping. It would be very appreciated. Um, is there anything else that Knit and Natter? There's Knit and Natter this week, this Wednesday, from 10 until 12. Uh, and you do not have to be crafty to go. You can just go for the Natter part. That's really fun. So come along and join everybody for that. Um, it will be really good fun. Anything else? Excellent. Okay, let's take a moment of quiet to prepare our hearts to worship God. <clears throat> God of love, you are our creator, our redeemer. You command us to love you and all that you have created. We gather to offer you this time of worship to renew our vow to love and to offer ourselves to you. Draw near to us, Lord, as we draw near to you. We praise God with our first hymn, Praise to the Lord, the Almighty, the King of creation.
Lord of inclusive love. You make it so that nobody is left out. No person is excluded from the invitation to live within the circle of your love. Though much of the life we know is about the separation between the inner circle and the outer, where some are poorer, hungrier, colder, sicker, and made to feel more restricted than others. Yours is a kingdom where love is unconditional and the potential within the created life is of equal possibility. Today we worship you, the God who is three in one, one person who calls us to create a unity and oneness in the family of creation where all are valued. God, we confess that as humanity, we have created divisions and segregation between the peoples of the earth through history and in the present. We have not listened to your eternal story from creation to redemption and have not grasped nor fostered inclusive and mutual love in the way we should have. We confess that sometimes we have been guilty of creating such comforts and security for ourselves as individuals or as nations. That we have taken our eye off what it means to be people who look out for one another. As people who admit to such failure, today we seek to be challenged to do better, accepting of your indefatigable grace and mercy, we are humbled and left with such a gratitude that we are ready to mend our ways and be more ready to live by the example of your son, Jesus, who taught us about the true meaning of friendship and so discover what it takes to be completely at one with you and all your people. We pray all of this in the prayer that Jesus taught us using whatever version and in whatever language is most familiar to us, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom the power and the glory forever. Amen. God's circle of love surrounds us. In Christ, we have forgiveness and receive the peace that only God can give. So in celebration of the love and peace that God gives us, let us share a sign of peace with those around us. The peace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with you all. Let us share a sign of peace. Last Sunday, um, I had the pleasure of taking two services with my husband, Ross, for two very small Shetland churches, uh, one in Bray and one in Olaberry. And the congregations were about 10 people. And we did the passing of the peace, and we got to shake hands with every single person in the congregation, which here would take us quite a long time. I think we'd have to make a sort of conga line of passing the peace to get to everybody. But it is wonderful to share that peace that God gives us with one another. We sing our next hymn, 510, Jesus Calls Us Here to Meet Him. And if you're following in your hymnal, we're omitting verse 4.
I'd like to invite Dorothy to come forward and lead us in our prayer and readings. Prayer for Elimination. Lord, open our hearts and minds by the power of your Holy Spirit that as the scriptures are read and your word is proclaimed, we may hear with joy what you say to us today. Amen. First readings from John 5, 1 to 6. Everyone who believes that Jesus is the Christ has been born of God and everyone who loves the parent loves the child. By this, we know that we love the children of God when we love God and obey his commandments. For the love of God is this, that we obey his commandments. And his commandments are not burdensome, for whatever is born of God conquers the world. And this is the victory that conquers the world, our faith. Who is it who conquers the world but the one who believes that Jesus is the Son of God? This is the one who came by water and blood, Jesus Christ, not with the water only, but with the water and the blood. And the Spirit is the one that testifies, for the Spirit is the truth. Second reading, John 15, 9 to 17. As the Father has loved me, so have I so have excuse me, so I have loved you. Abide in my love. If you keep my commandments, you will abide in my love. Just as I have kept my Father's commandments and abide in his love. I have said these things to you, so that my joy may be in you, and that your joy may be complete. This is my commandment that you love one another as I have loved you. No one has greater love than this to lay down one's life for one's friends. You are my friends if you do what I command you. I do not call you servants any longer because the servant does not know what the master is doing. But I have called you friends because I have made known to you everything that I have heard from my father. You did not choose me but I chose you, and I appointed you to go and bear fruit, fruit that will last, so that the Father will give you whatever you ask him in my name. I am giving you these commands so that you may love one another. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. As we reflect on our readings, our next hymn is A New Commandment That I Give to You.
Would you please pray with me? Loving God, may the words of my mouth and the meditations of all our hearts be pleasing in your sight. O Lord, our rock and our redeemer. Amen. One of the latest joys in my life is helping to teach a toddler how to talk. After our recent trip to Shetland, where we spent a lot of time on ferries and boats, he learned his first three-word phrase, more big boat. And as he gains more and more words in his vocabulary and his comprehension for more abstract concepts develop, we've been trying to teach him how to say, I love you. And toddlers learning to speak get really good at parroting back phrases, even if they don't really understand what they mean. So we can get a version of I love you, it's a little muddled, but I've been reflecting while we've been trying to teach him this on how he understands love. And if he really understands this concept of love that we are trying to teach him. Love, unlike other words and phrases that we learn as toddlers, isn't concrete. It's not like banana, which we know very well, or nap, which we don't want to do, or bath, now, which we protest. It's an abstract concept that has different meanings in different contexts and different weights depending upon how you apply it. I love my husband, but I also love cheese. And I'll leave it to you to decide which one you think I love more. It's selfish, really, I think, this, this task to try and teach him how to say I love you because we want to hear him say it to us. We know that he loves us. There are lots of ways that he shows us that he loves us, and lots of ways that he understands our love and care and affection for him. So why are we trying to teach him how to say, I love you? Perhaps it's because we want him to begin to learn and understand what love is, what it's like, how it should make you feel, to begin laying a healthy foundation for what it is and what it isn't. And so that he knows no matter what, that he is perpetually loved. Because people thrive and grow when they know that they are loved. In our reading from our gospel this morning, Jesus defines love from a Christian perspective. And it is a love that makes an abstract concept a concrete reality. It is a love that is perpetual and transformative and gives us a sense of belonging and inspires us to love others in a way that ends up shaping the world around us. Jesus is speaking to his disciples before his death and resurrection. And in the first part of this teaching moment that we heard, Jesus tells the disciples that the love that he has for them is the same love as God the Father has given to Jesus. And Jesus invites them to abide in that love, to make their home in that love, because by doing so, they will directly experience the love of God the Father. And here Jesus is making a declaration about who he is, connecting himself to God, the creator of all things. And how do we live in this love? Jesus tells us we keep the commandments he gives us as he has kept God's commandments. If we follow Jesus, if we do as he teaches us, that is how we make a home in the love of God. And by doing this, by choosing to follow Jesus, living in that love, Jesus tells us that we will receive joy. And not just any joy, but a joy that is complete. The kind of joy, the kind of fullness of life that God has always desired for us and promises us that we will receive through him. 
In the second part of this reading, we receive the commandment from Jesus, what we are to do to keep, to abide in his love, to make that home in God. And it is a simple and profound challenge. Jesus says, love one another as I have loved you. And how does Jesus love us? This side of the resurrection, we know how Jesus loves us. But to his disciples in our reading, Jesus is foreshadowing his death and resurrection and says, no one has greater love than this but to lay down one's life for one's friends. That is the kind of love that we are called to. It's not an abstract love, but a concrete, actionable love. The love of the cross, where we put aside ourselves for the sake of others. And Jesus loves us. God loves us not as a master loves servants, not as one who feels the other owes them something or needs to put in the work for them out of obligation. But Jesus loves us, God loves us as friends. And the God who calls us friends is also the God who chooses us, who makes the first move towards us in love, to be in relationship with us so that we know that we are perpetually loved. And out of that love, we are called and commissioned by Christ to bear fruit. And what is the fruit of that love? We know because we've received it from Christ himself. It is the power to transform. It changes us and the world that we live in to bring hope into despair, love into loneliness, empowerment to the disenfranchised, and freedom to the oppressed. So what are we to take away today from Jesus' teaching to his disciples and all us gathered here, his disciples today, about love? First, I think it is that the Christian life is about learning to be loved by God, accepting the love that God has for us. It's not always easy for us to accept that love, we don't always feel we deserve the love that God has for us. But Jesus reassures us that we are so loved that God is willing to sacrifice everything for us. Elsewhere in scripture, we're told that there is nothing, absolutely nothing, that can separate us from the love of God we know in Jesus Christ. And in our reading that we heard from 1 John today, we are reminded that we are children of God, that God loves us as a loving parent loves their child, a deep, unending, fierce, protective, steadfast, comforting love, a love of belonging. So regardless about how we feel about ourselves or what others might say about us, we are loved. You are loved. And when we learn this, when we truly take it in that we are loved, then we can grow and thrive as the people that God has called us to be and have that joy that is complete. Second, the Christian life is about allowing God's love to teach us how to love others. Jesus is our example in life and faith. I saw a story yesterday from somebody who said, I heard someone say, don't cross oceans for people who wouldn't cross a puddle for you. But then someone else spoke up and said, no, do it. Do cross oceans for people. Love all people, no conditions attached. No wondering whether or not they are worthy. Cross oceans, climb mountains. And that really resonated with me because I don't think that there are many people who would be willing to cross an ocean for someone who wouldn't cross a puddle for them. It's so countercultural to go above and beyond 
in loving somebody. But that is exactly what Jesus does for us. Jesus goes above and beyond, crossing oceans, climbing mountains, conquering death itself for every single person. And then Jesus invites us to do the same thing. And we do it not because Jesus tells us it's something we should do, but we do it out of a response to the love that we have received from God. We love others because God first loved us. Finally, if we love God and love others, and we know that love of God, God's love of us, then we need to allow that love to transform us and to shape the world we live in. God's love shapes and changes us. When you trust and believe that you are loved, it sets you free. Free from fear, free from judgment, free from pressure to be something that we're not, to be truly ourselves as God made us to be. The love of God leads us away from selfishness and towards a level of compassion and caring for others and for our world that seems preposterous but makes perfect sense in light of what God has given us. If we are God's children, then so is every person around us, regardless of their religion, their race, their sexuality, economic status, political opinion, or theology. It's easy to love those who agree with us, and it's a lot harder to love those who act, think, and live differently to us. But we are called to love others in the way that God loves us, without question, so that everyone can be the person that God made them to be. When we love in that way, we bear the fruit of God's love in the world, sowing kindness, generosity, forgiveness, reconciliation, and peace and wholeness into the fabric of our world so that in every moment that we are given on this earth, we are actively participating in God's transformation of the world through that love that we have been given. So, beloved children of God, will you hear and wholeheartedly accept that God loves you? Will you take that love and share it with others, loving regardless of the cost? And will you take part in God's transformation of the world that Jesus invites you into through loving God and loving one another? I hope so. May it be so for you. May it be so for me. And may it be so for all of us. Amen. We sing the hymn, Love is the Touch of Intangible Joy.
We love because God loves us. And we give because God has given to us. Our offering will now be collected. Let us pray. Go and bear fruit, you ask us, Lord Jesus, and we commit ourselves to that simple and profound task, to befriend others, to welcome those on the edges, to reconcile those who have been outcast, to build bridges of care and concern. Use us, Lord Jesus, and who we are, and what we bring, that we might bear fruit in your name. Lord of love, you call us to love all people in the way you love us. Today we pause to recognize what your love for us looks like. It is like nothing else. So often we fail, so often we mess up, yet you are there with unconditional love. Do we cherish this love you extend to us? Do we really acknowledge it with the gratitude we should? We take time to know your love for us. Lord of love, we are now ready, ready to take what we know about our inclusion in your circle of love, that we can extend our vision outwards and away from ourselves, focusing instead on the world around us, the people we live in community with, and the issues of the world itself. We pray for those who feel excluded, left out, for those who find society a place where it is easy to feel excluded from what others might take for granted. We pray for those who are made to feel not just servants of others, but at the beck and call of people around them, and indeed slaves to powerful masters who create a real experience of fear and distress. We take time to know your love for them We pray for those who feel unloved because of knowing little human love and affirmation in their life. We recognize how hard it must be for some 
to have any genuine sense of being loved by you. And we take time to know your love for them. Today, across the world, and running deep into our communities, may your love be more widely known and more broadly shared. Let such a peace envelop your people that any desire to exclude others will be anathema, for all will seek to welcome and befriend one another. We pray for all those known in our congregation today in need of your encircling love. For Etta and Andrew, Joe and Nick, Susanna and family. We take a moment to lift up all the people and situations on our hearts and minds this day in need of your encircling love. Lord, help us to accept your love and to love one another as you have loved us. All this we ask in the name of Jesus, in whose love we make our home. Amen. Our final hymn this morning is Love Divine, All Loves Excelling.
beloved, may you learn that God loves you. And may you learn to dwell, to make your home, to abide in that love. And may you love others as Jesus loves you. And may we all take part in Christ's transformation of the world. And as we go from this place, may the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious unto you. And may the Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace.